Okay, I have here a cordelette. This one is just a six mil, about five and a half feet long, um, but a nice, bright, beautiful color, great for demonstrating. If you decide to get a cordelette to add to your rack, um, it's a very handy tool to have as a trad climber. I recommend a seven mil cordelette that's at least 20 feet long. Um, we're gonna go over ways to safely tie together the end of a cordelette and the same rules apply for tying together two ropes for say a rappel. Um, so first of all, let's take the two ends and imagine for a moment the easiest way to tie it together. Could just throw a quick overhand in it like that, right? Well, um, this is called a flat overhand. We can see the, tip, the tail ends come out on the same side, like little antennas. And when this were to be loaded, you'd see that those load strands run flat to each other, like that. This is called a flat overhand. It's also nicknamed the European death knot. Um, did you notice that as I pulled it, the knot is kind of moving, it's rolling. Um, as under a heavy load, this can continue to roll and continue to roll, and even with enough tail, eventually capsize and come undone. Gee, it's even, it even almost made it come undone right there. Um, this is not a good way to tie the ends of your cordelette together. A flat overhand um, can come, can roll like that and come undone. Uh, let me show you another one. A lot of people have seen this out there for repelling. Um, there we go. We have a flat eight. Again, the tail ends are on the same side like some antennas. And when it's loaded, this eight knot is loaded like this. The lines are flat. And you can see how easily that rolls on itself. Well, um, in climbing accidents or repelling accidents where we had two ropes come apart and a, a dead climber who couldn't say what knot they had tied, everyone blamed the European death knot. Well, with factory testing, we know that this eight knot is a flat eight is even weaker and it capsizes and rolls even easier than an overhand knot. So a flat eight is not a good way to join the ends of two ropes together. What are some good ways? Well, let's start with doing an overhand that works. So here's our overhand, here's an overhand knot. I have at least as much tail that is going to be as long as um, the knot itself. And now I'm going to take the other tail and run it in the same way um, it enters this knot. I'm kind of doing a follow through here. I'm following this knot, but I'm coming in from this tail. I'm going to wrap it around the top and bring it out this side. And now, as I tighten this knot, you can see the tail ends are on two opposing sides. This is called an overhand bend, and this is a safe way to join the two ends of your cordelette or your rope. It takes a little bit more time, not much. Likewise, as you can imagine, there's a way to do that with the eight knot, even stronger. There we go. So here we have our eight. Oh, make sure I have enough tail here. There. And now I'm going to feed in this tail through this side so that when I finish, the tails will be coming out on opposite ends of this eight knot. Like that. That is another safe way to tie together the ends of your ropes. Now I have <clears throat> enough tail here. I have more than enough actually. Um, it would be enough if it was about as long as a knot, 
Um, if I want to do some, if I don't want to retie it and I want to do something with the slack, I can cinch them off in some single fisherman's here just to make sure it stays clear. Um, or just retie the knot and keep the, the tail ends more tidy. Okay, and there is yet another way to tie together the ends of your cordelette. And this one is perhaps the most common way. All right, we're going to take the two ends like this. Again, they're gonna feed into each other. And now I'm going to tie a double fisherman's knot. Okay, coming down this way and up and out. Okay, again, tail's coming out opposite directions here. So I'm gonna do that once again on this side. Make a double fisherman. Like that. So now I have two double fishermen's here and I'm just going to pull them together tight. Now you can see that we have our tail ends coming out of opposite sides again, once again. And the tighter I pull this, the tighter the load gets, um, the tighter these loops cinch down on themselves and hold in place. Um, this is a great way to tie together the ends of your cordelette. But, um, especially if you're not tying and untying it all the time because it does take the longest to tie of those three that work. <clears throat> but one thing to be careful of is these are tight knots that cinch down tight on, on themselves. And it is a good idea to undo your cordelette and check the strength of your rope every once in a while. Webbing and ropes don't last forever. And under the load and under wear and tear, um, they'll wear out. So even if you have a cordelette with, that's tied together really well and you think it's okay, just untie it every once in a while and double check it, make sure everything's still strong and looks good. <clears throat>